Welcome to the Coach's Corner. With winning, with wisdom. And uh, today, <clears throat> for a topic of discussion, um, as those that are coming in, uh, you know, we bring wisdom according to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Um, therefore, uh, you got to get it. You know, get it. And with all that getting, uh, get an understanding. Principle meaning the most important thing that you can tap into. It's what wisdom is. And today we want to come with some principles that empower you. Um, Life-changing principles. Today we're going to deal with um, as those that are coming in um, with this wisdom empowerment revelation. Because either you're winning with wisdom or you're losing with foolishness. <clears throat> There's no in-between place. <clears throat> you either one or the other. You're either winning with wisdom or you're losing with foolishness. And today, um, we want to bring you some wisdom principles. We want to really empower uh, men and young men and uh and uh, women that are raising sons and women that have husbands, how to support uh, the dream and the vision, how to respect the grind and the anointing in your of your man, your husband. You know, how to speak to the king in your sons. And so uh, today, as we want to deal with these principles, <clears throat> we're going to use for a scripture reference today. Um, if anyone will not work, Neither shall he eat. And um, we, this, is, um, this is a powerful statement. And we want to really deal with this uh, today. Uh, you know, for those, uh, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Second Thessalonians 3 and 10. <clears throat> so that's a powerful statement. It's a powerful statement. You know what I'm saying? There are many men that are starving, uh, that are starving to death, full of potential, full of greatness, uh, got a treasure on the inside of them, gifted, talented, yet they're starving. And today we want to bring you some wisdom principles and strategies to allow you and to help you eat. And to quit starving your dream. Uh, there it is right there. And that's where we're going today. Quit starving your dream. Quit starving your purpose. What good is it for a man to live and not fulfill his purpose on the earth? Uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, the late Dr. Miles Monroe spoke uh, into my life and empowered me on how one of the richest places in the world is the cemetery because in it is buried a lot of wealth of knowledge, dreams, visions, purposes, plans of God that never got birthed into the earth realm. So today we want to empower you to quit starving your dream. Listen, you know, the question for discussion right now, how we going to eat? How we going to eat? Mm-hmm. How are we going to eat? Some of you, your career, young folks, your career is asking you that. You know what I'm saying? Your, 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 your career, some of you men, your families are asking you that. Your wives are saying that. How are we going to eat? How are we going to eat? Oh, man, oh, man. Listen, here's the key. I'm asking another question for, for a point of reflection and thought is what are you working on? What are you working on? What are you working on? We learned last week in the Coach's Corner with Dr. Cook, a dream of the wisdom there uh, in Ecclesiastes 5 and 3. It says, for the dream comes through much effort, <clears throat> much labor, being about your business. For the dream cometh through much effort, much labor. Second Thessalonians today, 3 and 10, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. Quit starving your dream. <clears throat> 
quit starving your dream. My, 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 can we go deeper? Listen, if we had to depend on your labor, meaning you, your household, those that are connected to you, some of you young men that are watching your coaches, your teachers, you know what I'm saying, your school, if they had to depend on your labor, your work, would they be able to eat and how long? Would they be able to eat and how long? And you say, well, what do you mean uh, how long? We're going to deal with the, the, the latter end of that first because a lot of men, a lot of people, mankind, are inconsistent. They'll do something for a season. And even in the scriptures, the book of wisdom, it, it says be instant in season and out of season. Meaning when you don't feel like it. When you deep off in your feelings and just want to quit and I don't feel like going today. I don't feel like working out today. I don't feel like studying today. I don't feel like uh, going to work today. I don't feel like putting in the effort. I don't feel like writing today. I don't feel like uh, doing what it takes today, budgeting my finances. I don't feel like it today. No, 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 no. Go to the, you got to be consistent. And that's a key word. A key word, consistent. Because too many people are inconsistent. When it comes to their labor and to their work, the minute they are challenged or back up, back up against the wall, they quit. And even in the book of wisdom, it says those that quit on the day of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Listen, wisdom is about having strength to be able to stand the duration of time that no matter what I go through, I'm going to keep feeding myself. Come on, I'm going to keep eating. And I'm going to keep feeding those that are dependent upon me. Listen, listen, listen. Every time somebody score a touchdown or do something great in the football game, let me talk to my young men. First thing they get to hollering is they eating. They eating. They eating. Let me ask you this question. Is some of y'all eating in the classroom? What's your GPA? Do you understand? Are you eating in, you eating in the athletics, but are you eating in the academics? So once the season is over with, then what? My, 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 or can you, whoo, my, my, can you still keep eating? Can your coach, can your team, can your school depend on your GPA to help them, uh, you know what I'm saying, to, to set a standard of excellence? Can they depend on you in the classroom? Husbands, can your wife and family depend on you to be consistent with going to work, consistent with saving, consistent with being responsible, consistent with budgeting, consistent with being there, or your wife lonely, praying that night, where's my husband at? Where is he? Is he going to bring the check home? Is he going to quit this job? You know what I'm saying? Can they depend on your consistency? Or is there a time clock on how long you and those that are dependent on you can eat? Are you consistent? If one will not work, he shall not eat. The third, the third point, you know what I'm saying? The third point is eating is getting what belongs to you. And that's what eating is. Eating is getting the things that belong to you. Do you understand? What God has for you, it is for you. You know what I'm saying? And eating, working toward what is mine. Do you understand? I'm going after what's mine. Because next week we're going to deal with the misconception that a lot of young men have taken from uh, Mr. Labar Ball of how he talked about you got to speak things into existence. And we're going to deal with that next Thursday because many of them have been deceived thinking that they're going to sit around and lay around and just talk up things. No, -uh. and without the work, the work is how you speak things into existence because the work speaks for itself. The grind speaks for itself. The shine, the glamour, it speaks for itself. It speaks for what you do in secret, like we talked about last week. Because what God seeth in secret, what you're doing, what you're studying, what you're grinding, what you giving your best, what you praying, what you're doing, what it takes. Do you understand? Empowering yourself. He will reward you openly. And then your reward that people will see will speak for itself. The labor speaks. Do you understand? Because Ecclesiastes 5 and 3 says, For the dream comes through much effort, through much labor, through much work. Man, you got to be consistent. Do you understand? You got to be consistent. Just speak that over yourself. I am a consistent 
human being. I am a consistent man. I am a consistent woman. I got to be consistent. Fourth point. <clears throat> Listen, <clears throat> you can't be eating off somebody else's success. It's, you can't be eating off somebody else's success. No, 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 no. You got to eat off your own grind. Can't be eating off somebody. You can't be laying up on somebody, a man laying up on a woman. You ain't got no, you don't have a job. You ain't providing no kind of finance. She carrying the load. Mm -mm, no, no. You can't be eating off somebody else's grind, off somebody else's success. If a man don't labor, he don't eat. God, she can't be supporting and, and, and feeding your dream and you not even working it. You got people believing in you and you don't even believe in you. Do you understand? You got people seeing your potential and you don't even see your potential. You got people interceding in their prayer closet for you and believing for you and you not even doing nothing. You eating off somebody else's success. Do you understand? You didn't even block on that play. Yeah, they scored. And the running back and the quarterback and they gave they gave you props, the line or whoever props in the end of the game. You, you took that play off. You were inconsistent. You eating off somebody else's success. Did they win that championship because of you? Or did you pull a J.R. Smith move and you already thought the game was won? Or you always think you got it together and you can't listen to nobody else? You being misguided and misdirected. Do you understand? You think you know it all and ain't got nothing going for yourself. You need to be humble. Listen to me, young man. Be humble. Just like the rap artist said, and sit down and listen and get this wisdom. Because either you winning with wisdom or you losing with foolishness. Listen, eat off your own works. That's still in number four. Uh, do you understand? And, and here's the question. Do you have a right to eat in this season of your life? Do you have a right to eat? Are you working? Are you grinding? Or are you cheating, looking on somebody else's paper, getting the answers? You got somebody else doing your work for you. Do you understand? Can you eat? Lord of God, do you have a right to eat in this season of your life? Oh, man, let's go a little deeper. Fifth point, I had eight points today. Uh, listen, your career, dreams, and visions will starve if you don't put in the work. Yes, listen, your career, your dreams, and visions will starve to death if you don't put in the work. Do you understand? You got to put in the work. You got to get up. Good morning, sir. Uh, you got to get up. You got to put in the work. You got to get out the bed. You got to put the smartphone down that's dumbing you down. You got to do what it takes, man. You got to get up and do what it takes. Do you understand? Or your dreams and your visions will starve to death. Some of you have, have filed bankruptcy. Some of your credit is just jacked up. You got to work. Here it is. So you can eat again. So you can accomplish something. So you can do something greater in life. You got to work on repairing that. You got to work on uh, repairing broken relationships that, that you, you got to fix. You got to rewrite your wrongs so that you can eat or otherwise your dreams, your visions, and your career will starve to death. Do you understand? You got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be pulling the willing to put in the work. And I repeat it again, Ecclesiastes 5 and 3, for the dream comes through much effort, through much labor. Do you understand? And the voice of fools through, through many words. Don't be a fool. I always talk about what you're going to do. How you laying around talking about you the king of that castle. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you ain't even putting no strength in. You ain't, you come on, come on, come on. You ain't punching nobody's clock. You ain't putting nothing together. You, you ain't got no vision. Boy. Ain't, and you, come on, come on. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let me go a little deeper. I want to miss this. Listen, uh, no, the, my sixth point. If something happened to your family, if something happened to you, and here it is, can your family, your legacy, eat, E-A-T, after you're gone? If something happened to you today, because there, it's appointed unto man once to die, and nobody knows when that appointment with death is here on the earth. No one knows the, no, the day nor the hour. So if you something happened to you, can your family, your legacy, continue to eat after you're gone? Proverbs 13 and 22 says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. 
Can your family continue to eat after you're gone? Or would your wife, with your mother in them, with your brother in them, your sister in them, your cousin in them, would they have to go fund your funeral, do a GoFundMe page to try to fund your funeral? Would they have to sell chicken plates, fish dinner, spaghetti, uh, and, and frozens and everything else? to try to fund your funeral? Would somebody have to go in debt to fund your funeral because they're starving now? Come on. You, they were starving while you were there because you were eating off them and now you're dead and they're really starving because they went in debt just to give you a proper burial, proper funeral. Come here, somebody. Winning with wisdom. As I get ready to wrap this up, oh, my, my, my. Could your legacy cause still eat? Could your legacy still eat? Because you instituted and you empowered it into your children and grandchildren and into others and you and you made such an effect. Do you understand? Or the God, I mean, you know, oh boy, boy, boy. You want to make it so where could no man, nobody feel your shoes, take your place in the life of your wife, in the life of your children, in the life of that team, in the life of that school, that no man could take your place because you have worked in such a way to, to give yourself market differential, to distinguish yourself in such a way to listen, man. <laughs> if he ain't there, that's just gonna be a part missing because that cannot be replaced because you're working, you're grinding to make your dream. You're grinding in such a way that you eating and everybody connected to you eating good. We eating. We eating. Come on, we eating. So therefore, I'm working. I got my credit together. I'm working on it. I, I, I'm making sure I got insurance. I got life insurance because anything could happen. I'm making sure, you know, I got a will uh, in place. I'm making sure, um, you know, uh, what do you got? Um, what? What else? The will. Uh, just making sure things that are in, in order if something happens happen do you understand and if something don't happen i got things in order because it creates security for those that are connected to me when things are secure hmm. listen how you gonna eat as we get ready to close the question how we gonna eat how we gonna eat eat work it get it how you desire to live Hey, this has been Dr. Sullivan with the Coach's Corner. Listen, <clears throat> I'm sitting here today. I think I got like 12 copies just in my presence of winning with wisdom. If you don't have this for the men in your life, or for the young idiot in your life, or for the woman in your life, you need to get this. It's filled with principles just like this, life-changing principles. It's a manual that you can grab something each day, any moment, you can go in there and find something that will empower your life. Do you understand? It will power your life. I encourage you to make the investment. You can go to winningwithwisdombook.com. I'm going to post the website in a minute where you can go down my timeline and find it all through it. But hey, listen, man. you either winning with wisdom or you losing with foolishness. Until next time. Peace and love. All right, son, how you tell me to say this to the phone and to the book? <laughs>